In the late 90s, the internet was just starting to gain traction, and with it came the birth of social networking sites. It was a time of dial-up modems and loading screens, a time when the idea of instant global communication was more science fiction than reality. Yet, in this digital frontier, the first recognized social networking site, sixdegrees.com, made its appearance in 1997. Named after the six degrees of separation concept, sixdegrees.com was a pioneer in its field. It allowed users to create profiles, list their friends, and even search for others they might know. Users could send messages and post bulletin board items to people in their first, second, and third degrees. It developed the blueprint for social networking as we know it today. The visionaries behind sixdegrees.com recognize the potential of the internet as a tool for connection, a space where geographical boundaries are irrelevant. They saw a future where people could maintain relationships, reconnect with old friends and meet new ones, all from the comfort of their own homes. Yet, sixdegrees.com was somewhat ahead of its time. Back then, not many people were online, and even fewer understood the potential of social networking. The concept was new, and the world was not quite ready to embrace it fully. Despite reaching a peak of about 1 million users, the site was shut down in 2001. But even though SixDegrees.com did not survive the test of time, its impact on the digital world is undeniable. It served as the template for the social networking sites that would follow, paving the way for the likes of Friendster, MySpace and of course Facebook. The story of SixDegrees.com is a testament to the power of innovation and foresight. It was a site that dared to imagine a connected world, a world where distance and time zones are irrelevant in the face of digital communication. Sixdegrees.com may have been ahead of its time, but it set the groundwork for what was to come. It was the dawn of social networking, a revolution that would forever change the way we communicate, interact and perceive the world around us. As the new millennium rolled around, so did a new era of social networking sites. The year 2002 marked the birth of Friendster, a unique platform that brought a fresh perspective to the idea of online socialization. The platform offered a virtual space where users could connect with friends, share content, and explore others' profiles. It wasn't just about connecting with known friends, but also about meeting new people with shared interests. The concept was revolutionary, and it was the spark that ignited the social networking wildfire, the very next year, in 2003, another heavyweight stepped into the ring, MySpace. MySpace took the idea of Friendster and amplified it. It gave its users more control over their online persona with customizable profiles, blogs, and a platform to share music. This was a hit, especially among the younger generation and budding artists. It was the first time that the internet had seen such a surge in user-generated content. And this was all thanks to MySpace. But it wasn't just about leisure and entertainment. The same year, LinkedIn was launched as the first professional networking site. The goal was simple yet profound, to connect the world's professionals to make them more productive and successful. LinkedIn was a game changer, providing a platform for professionals to network, share their achievements, and find new opportunities. It was the first of its kind and it set the bar high for professional social networking. These platforms were more than just websites, they were communities, each with its unique culture and purpose. They began to shape our lives, influencing the way we communicate, share and connect. The world was getting smaller and for the first time, we were all part of a global community. While these sites were gaining popularity, a new player was about to enter the field and change the game forever. In 2004, a Harvard student named Mark Zuckerberg launched a site that would redefine social networking, Facebook. With its humble beginnings in a college dorm room, Facebook quickly grew from an exclusive Harvard network to an internet phenomenon that connected people far beyond the ivy-clad walls of academia. Its rapid expansion was unprecedented, spreading like digital wildfire across the globe. From the onset, Facebook distinguished itself with unique features, setting a new standard for social networking sites. Remember the news feed? That was a Facebook innovation. For the first time, users could get real-time updates from their friends, families, and favorite brands all in one place. 
but perhaps the most revolutionary aspect was the shift towards real name usage. This was a stark departure from the screen name culture of the early internet. By insisting on real names, Facebook fostered a sense of authenticity and accountability, a move that was met with both applause and criticism. Facebook's impact on society was both swift and profound. It became a platform for sharing personal milestones, a tool for mobilizing social movements, a vessel for viral content and a new avenue for advertisers. It made the world feel smaller, more accessible. It changed the way we communicate, the way we consume information, and even the way we perceive ourselves and others. Yet as Facebook grew, so did its controversies. Questions about privacy, data security, and the platform's role in shaping public opinion became increasingly prevalent. These issues are still hot topics today, reminding us of the double-edged sword that is technology. Facebook's rise also triggered a ripple effect in the tech world, inspiring a new generation of social networking platforms. These platforms sought to differentiate themselves by catering to specific needs and niches, adding further diversity to the social media landscape. Facebook's impact was undeniable, but the social networking landscape was about to get even more diverse. As we move to the next scene, we delve into the era of microblogging and multimedia sharing, where brevity and visuals took center stage. As we moved into the late 2000s and early 2010s, social networking began to shift towards more focused experiences. Imagine a world where news spreads not through newspapers or television, but through a stream of short, timely messages. That's the world Twitter brought to life. Launched in 2006, Twitter took the concept of microblogging and turned it into a global phenomenon. It became a platform where anyone, from the person next door to the president, could share their thoughts in 140 characters. And as it grew, it became more than just a platform for thoughts. It became a platform for real-time news, with events being reported as they happened, often before traditional news outlets could catch up. Meanwhile, another shift was happening. Instagram and Pinterest, launched in 2010 and 2012 respectively, focused on the power of visual content. Instagram let users share their lives through photos, applying filters to make even the most mundane images look like works of art. Pinterest, on the other hand, became a hub for inspiration, allowing users to pin images to virtual boards on everything from home decor to fashion to recipes. But it wasn't just about what was being shared, but also how long it lasted. Enter Snapchat, launched in 2011. Snapchat introduced the concept of ephemeral content, images and videos that disappeared after a short time. This added a sense of immediacy and intimacy to social networking, encouraging spontaneity and authenticity. Each of these platforms carved out their own niche, offering different ways to communicate and share. They understood that in the vast world of social networking, there was room for more than just one size fits all solutions. They recognized the power of targeted experiences, of giving users the freedom to share in the ways that best suited them. These platforms diversified the social networking scene, but the evolution didn't stop there. Today, the world of social networking is more varied than ever. We've witnessed an intriguing shift in the social media landscape, with the rise of niche networks that cater to specific interests and needs. Platforms like TikTok, Clubhouse and Signal have carved out their own unique spaces, appealing to audiences seeking fresh ways to connect and share. TikTok, with its short-form video content, has revolutionized the way we consume media, captivating the attention of Generation Z and beyond. It's a platform where creativity thrives and anyone with a phone can potentially become an overnight sensation. Clubhouse, with its audio-based format, has brought back the age-old charm of radio, but with a twist. Here, users can drop into various rooms to listen to or participate in conversations on a wide array of topics. It's like a continuous global conference right at your fingertips. Signal, on the other hand, has positioned itself as a bastion of privacy, offering end-to-end -end encryption for its users. In an era where data privacy concerns are top of mind, Signal offers a haven for those seeking secure communication. 
the shift towards these niche, privacy-focused and interest-based networks reflects the evolving needs and preferences of the digital population. But the innovation doesn't stop there. We're on the cusp of another breakthrough in social networking, virtual reality, or VR. Imagine stepping into a virtual world where you can interact with your friends in three dimensions, attend concerts, or even explore the cosmos. This is no longer the stuff of science fiction. Companies are already investing heavily in this technology, and it's only a matter of time before VR social networks become a part of our everyday lives. From SixDegrees.com to TikTok, the journey of social networking sites is a testament to our innate desire to connect and share. Who knows what the future holds? As we continue to innovate and push the boundaries of what's possible, one thing remains certain. Our desire to connect and share will continue to drive the evolution of social networking sites for years to come.